Now at 5, an update on an outbreak inside the Portland VA hospital. More than a dozen staff and patients have tested positive for COVID-19. And keeping connected, well apart. A special education teacher is being praised for finding creative ways to keep her students engaged. But first, Catholic churches beginning to reopen in Portland. And let's pray uh, that uh, this goes off well. It's not going to be perfect right away, uh, but we'll get there. Uh, in time. Mass is still looking a little different. What changes are being mandated to keep worshipers safe? The News at 5 starts now. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for being with us this evening. I'm Brittany Fulgers, and before we get to those top stories, we just want to say Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms, the grandmas, aunts, and guardians, to the women who have shaped us and continue to show us love every single day. Many of us didn't get to spend the day with those amazing women in our lives, and Let's be honest here, this probably isn't the first Mother's Day that you haven't actually been with mom because life just happens that way. But this year, not being together, it feels even harder. I have to say, I miss my mom, Joanne, more than I think I ever have at 30 years old. And she's really the rock of the Falkers family. She taught me how to be strong, the importance of empathy, and she's still, every single day, making me a better person. Mom's job is never done. I miss her more than ever, but I also worry about her more than ever. I'm worried about her being exposed to COVID-19. I'm worried about what happens if she gets sick and I can't be there with her. And I know a lot of you have that same worry too. So that's why I'm thankful for every day that I have. For every FaceTime chat and phone call, I just gotta say, Mom, I love you. And to all of the moms out there, happy Mother's Day. We love you so much. Let's get to your news. Well, several Catholic churches in the area held mass in person for the first time in nearly two months today. The Archdiocese of Portland gave parishes a choice this week, telling them that if they felt ready, they could open for mass again this weekend. But as Morgan Romero tells us, it comes with some restrictions. Off Southeast Woodstock in Portland, the church finally gathered again. to see each other again after some time. It was really hard. The sacrament is very important to us, you know, uh, the Mass and receiving the Holy Communion is the center of our faith. Our Lady of Sorrows pastor felt ready to welcome parishioners this weekend. Archbishop Alexander Sample said in a video message, I come to bring you great news today. Catholics can take Holy Communion, but mass will look very different. It's limited to just 25 people at one time. Under Governor Brown's orders, people have to sign up ahead of time to help with contact tracing. Churches put safety measures in place, like social distancing, and buildings will be disinfected. There's nothing we can do to completely eliminate all risk, but we're doing everything we can to open up our churches again, responsibly, carefully, and with great thought. Following OHA's guidance, he urged seniors and people with compromised immune systems or underlying health conditions to stay home. He also said not every pastor feels ready to reopen. Some need more time. I ask my brothers and sisters that you have great understanding and patience at this time as we begin to transition back to some level of normalcy in the life of our church. And let's continue to pray that we will gather together again soon. Father Mark at Holy Cross told his parish they can't safely reopen yet. Our situation here at Holy Cross means that with my chemotherapy and radiation starting very soon, and also a surgery date on the other end of that, we are not planning to reopen even in a limited way for Mass. Like so many other churches, they'll still stream services. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But for those that feel safe to go to Mass, they embrace the step toward normal. Or our new normal, in our new COVID-19 world. It was a great joy that we finally, uh, gradually, even though it's limited, reopening, feels great and we thank Jesus for that. Hallelujah. Morgan Romero. Hallelujah. K2
KGW News. Governor Brown's office sent us a statement about the shift to in-person masses. They say in part, quote, we recognize that physical distancing requirements present challenges for organizations, faith-based organizations, which play an important role in so many people's lives, especially in times of crisis. But faith leaders can tend to those spiritual needs of their con congregations without putting the health and safety of their entire community at risk. As part of Washington's approach to reopen the state, drive-in church services are now allowed, but there are certain guidelines that must be followed. Families have to stay in their cars during the outdoor service. The church can't provide any food or beverages, and any collections must be made in drop boxes. Well, there's some positive news today in Oregon's fight against COVID-19. The Oregon Health Authority reported no new deaths from the virus today. This is the third day in the past week that health officials reported no new deaths. The state's death toll from the virus remains at 127. There are now 3,171 known positive cases here in Oregon. And at least 17 of those cases are from people at the Portland Veterans Affairs Medical Center. The cases involve three patients, 13 staff members, and one medical trainee, and originated at one of the center's medical surgical inpatient units. As a precaution, the medical center is not accepting ambulances to its emergency department or accepting inpatient transfers from other facilities. Now here's a look at Washington's case numbers. Health officials are reporting 931 total deaths and there are more than 16,800 positive cases. If you're traveling through SeaTac Airport soon, you'll need to wear a face covering. Last week, the airport announced employees would be required to wear masks. Now the rule is being expanded to essentially anyone who enters the airport. There are exceptions for some people, including very young children. The rule officially goes into effect May 18th. Well, turning now to our weather and all the moms out there really lucked out with another beautiful summer like day. Chris, it's still gorgeous out there. How long are we going to be seeing this warm stretch sticking around? I'm, I'm, I'm patting myself on the back <laughs> for that one. As you should, as yeah. you should. Uh, <laughs> of course, right? That means <laughs> I got to take the lumps when the when the bad weather comes. And if you like rain, we have changes coming our way. And you asked how soon those changes are coming our way. Uh, probably tomorrow. More on that in a bit. First off, a few more hours of sunny or at least uh, thin overcast skies, uh, kind of blocking some of that sun out there. But we still managed 87 at Portland again today. Not a record today unlike yesterday, but still a toasty one. 87 up in Kelso yesterday. Kelso Longview area was 90. And as we check out uh, elsewhere across the state again, another warm afternoon. Hood River topping out at 82. Aurora topped out at 88. Note a lot cooler though at the coast. Astoria only hit 63 this afternoon. Live look from the Wells Fargo Sky Camera. We've got the cloud cover thickening up right now at PDX. It's 85 and a quick check of, the, check of the plan for the rest of this evening. Clouds building in, but we will be dry in the valley this evening. Brittany, there are some thunderstorms beginning to pop along the spine of the Cascades, a sign of those changes coming our way. More on that with your full forecast in just a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Chris.